First thing I'm going to start off with is the Masquerade base and I've already done a tutorial showing how to do this and I'll have a link to that in the description box if you haven't seen it already. Now before I do anything else I need to prime this and the reason that I'm going to be doing that is because I'll be using watercolour and this clay is quite porous so I don't want the colour to get sucked into the clay, I want it to still look vivid. So I'm going to be using an alternative to a primer which is just a little bit of white acrylic paint, some water and then you're going to do a few coats. I do three coats over the masks. You could probably get away with one or two but I wanted to do three just to make sure that I'd covered absolutely everything. And you want to clean your brush and apply another coat. And after this I'm going to be using some of my favourite watercolours. I've already done swatches of these so I know exactly how they look and I know what colours I want to use and what in what order. So I'm going to be using some water. What you want to do is dampen an area of the mask and then put little blobs of colour and see where that watercolour will slowly spread out. The trick you can do is to put down a blob of watercolour and then blow it in whatever direction you want and you'll get these really beautiful organic splatter looking patterns. So I'm going to keep doing this. And the main thing I'm going to stick to is having that colour focused around the eye and then blow any excess water away from the eye so that it all focuses on the eyes. Then I'm going to take a fan brush, load it up with whatever colour I want and then I'm going to throw some splatters around the eyes before I go in with some swirls. So I'm going to be using a thinner paintbrush for this and I'm not really thinking about it to be honest. At this point I'm just doing whatever kind of swirl and whatever colour takes my fancy. If you want to, you don't have to do this part, you could just paint it to look like different coloured full slashes or you can go all over the place and add so many swirls that it completely takes over the mask. It's up to you. Once I've used all the swirls and dots that I want to, I'm going to go ahead and apply a few rhinestones. Of course, if you're not a fan of rhinestones, you can skip this step, but as you know, I am. So I'm going to apply a few, not too many, just wherever I think they're going to complement the watercolour. And then after that, I'm going to move on to my trusty glue gun. And I'm going to be using a glue gun which has a gold glue stick. If you don't have gold glue sticks, you can use a regular colour and then paint over it with something like a gold nail varnish. It's a trick that I use quite often and it works very well if that's not something you have to hand. So I'm going to outline the mask and then I'm going to do these little swirls. And the easiest way to do that is to have a little blob of glue and then work your way around and out and back to the outer corner of the mask. And I'm going to add quite a few of these. Some of them are going to come around the edges of the mask, some of them are going to stem from the eyes. Just go for whatever kind of pattern you want. If you're not sure, then have a look at Google Images or Pinterest, anything like that. Figure out the design you want and then work from there. I'm also going to line the eyes as well. And I think on the left eye, I ended up having this little teardrop pattern where I had a larger tear, a medium sized tear, and then a smaller tear. And it's very small, but it's little details like this that make masquerade masks so much more beautiful than if you leave them plain. And once you've finished with the glue gun, that's pretty much it. When I was making the mask, I already added some holes in the corners so that I could add a thread or an elastic band if I wanted to. But other than that, you're done.